human. I can only remember the riding style of so many horses at one time. Gosh, I'm not even gonna come at comment about Tanaka anymore. It's just the same, the same. You know what? I don't even have to say it. <laughs> I don't even have to say it. Um. All right, Rocky Hurricane up in the Golden Derby. I said I had to give him a shot at a Grade One in the last episode to see if he was gonna be capable of winning any of these type of races. And fifth favorite here today. And look, uh, rival stablemate, actually, Common Inspector, who's our original horse that I uh, lost, but that was kind of by, by choice. Uh, second favorite, split effort, 14 horses, the actual favorite. But let's check out Common Inspector stats. Here's Rocky Hurricane. Uh, he's been doing well as of lately. I totally forgot to check his stats before his race. I totally said I was going to do that. That power rating, awful. I talked about that a lot last episode. Common Inspector. I forgot, since I lost him so early, didn't get a chance to reveal most of his stats. All I know is his temper and feel are average. Beautiful guy, but yeah, he was one of those weird black ruby horses that just did not work out. I don't know why. So, this race is going to tell us a lot about Rocky Hurricane. It's going to tell us whether or not I can run him grade 1s or whether or not he's just going to be a grade 2 all-star. Yeah, it's pretty much where it's at right now, so... We don't really have a choice. We don't really have a choice to figure it out the old-fashioned way with Rocky Hurricane. Vivid Eye is still with the record here. That's pretty impressive. If I must say so myself. We just recently retired her the last two years. Well, the last three years, really. But again, you guys know what I mean. All right, good start for Rocky Hurricane. Do 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 do. All right, now he doesn't want to run as a leader, but like nobody's really taking the init initiative with the pace. So, ah, did not mean to bump that horse. Just drifted a little bit too much. My bad. My bad. My bad. Common inspector as the front runner that that horse is will obviously try to contain the lead, but not really. Also a procedure. In fact, we're all procedures. This is why the pace sucks. And nobody wants to get to the front. It's not going to be me. I will go ahead and tuck him into the rail here. This is a nice trip. This is this is the ideal trip I want when I'm racing on procedures. And I feel like it's just so hard for me to get it. Because the AI in my game, they just race really weird. They'll race really competitive at the front. They'll be five wide across the stretch. Like It's just hard to get good positioning. And I've spent too many years racing like a doofus of just getting blocked in this game constantly. So I learned to be a little bit more flexible in case um, the AI were just clogging my lanes and preventing me from getting any real sort of momentum or real space that I need needed to operate. But that's just how it goes. It's just how it goes. Do, 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 do. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, hopefully this would be a good start. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Common Inspector. That horse is way behind us. From, or excuse me, Rocky Hurricane, not Marchman, Rocky Hurricane. Uh, way better effort than I was actually expecting, to be honest with you. That's a tough race at 12 furlongs. I was thinking Marchman, but obviously we were racing on Rocky Hurricane. And he finished his second place in the Golden Derby behind Split Effort. And Common Inspector actually did finish third. But man, Split Effort just had a little bit more. That was a great race. He was supposed to finish fifth, so... That, to me, tells me he, he obviously exceeded expectations there, clearly. And to me, that's a good sign. Now, I don't know if that means he'll be a Hall of Famer. Prob unlikely, I think. But can we win grade ones? Maybe if I run him a little bit shorter. You know, 12 is a distance he can run, but against a super competitive field, he may not win. 
But I think he can finish in the top three. So awesome effort there. That's encouraging, at least. I feel like I can actually win some grade ones with him. I just have to put him in the right races. I was I was wondering if I could win grade ones, and I think that effort shows he can win grade ones. Just maybe a little bit easier field. So that, that to me is promising, despite his bad power rating. Pearly balls up in this grade two ten furlongs. We are the favorites. We are the favorites. Silver asset is the second favorite. Not bad, but Pearly Ball is a monster of a horse so far. Almost near his peak, 90 heart, 82 speed, 71 stamina. Power rating is only at 60. And again, proving my point that most of my studs and colts in this game don't actually have good power ratings. Hence, why a horse like Marksman is going to be great to use for breeding. Marksman is not the horse we just raced, but once we get back to him, that, that'll be the point. Which won't be in this episode, but the next one most likely. Major River, I think, will actually be closing us out here today. And her grade two Nagano. Just keeping her on the grade two path and trying to win. Ah! Gosh, I am just all over it with the bumping of horses. I'm just kind of being lazy, to be honest with you. But I want to get over to the rail here. This horse looks familiar. You want to mine? Or just similar tack? Moon Singer! Yeah, I, I swear I lost a Moon Singer, didn't I? Yeah, we definitely lost a Moon Singer. Right? I can't tell. I'm trying to look for the tack. I swear we lost a Moon Singer. But I could be wrong. No, those tack colors aren't my colors. Oh, yes, they are. That's Moon Singer to the outside with the white blinkers. Okay. I don't even remember who she's from. I think is she one of like he stargazings or real happies like ah, I can't remember. Now this positioning sucks. This is what I mean when the AI like box you in. This is one of those races I hate. But I can't do anything. I'm kind of stuck until they move. And I'm just going to have to hope that something clears up. But this is what I hate about sticking to the inside if there's no space. You're at the mercy of the AI. The gaps are going to clear and wow. We actually get a lane. That doesn't usually happen. This is one of those races. I just mentioned it. I'm like, I talk about those races not happening. They usually don't. And Pearly Ball is just going to drive it home, man. Drive it home. Get the job done. But that's what Pearly Ball does. Easy grade two victory. It's what he does, man. It's what he does. He's a horse from Silver that I got. And he's been fantastic. One of my only... <laughs> favorite silver horses because uh yeah he makes it easy <laughs> one late clear over cool hawk yeah even with contact and everything else double s in the spurt smooth sailing there with pearly ball getting the job done doing what we know he's capable of doing it's really all it has to be man it's that simple we're closing out the show with Major River, second favorites behind Flaring Risk, Dancing Trial in this race, Amusing Factory. Realistically, four horses all have an even chance of winning this race. And uh, Major River is the oldest, the oldest gal here. But there's uh, two, two boys that are also seven years old. And actually Chili Hawk, or Chili Link, excuse me, at the top, eight years old. We're talking about the old guard here. Plenty of these. Former, plenty of former grade one winning horses in this field for this grade two Nagano. Hence why it's always one of my favorites, because I feel like every one of these races, if you're fortunate, you get competitive fields all the time. And it's just a really fun mile dirt race to run on this track in Nagano. And Major River is still strong enough to win this race because she just came off of her peak last, last year. And again, I'm racing her until she's eight and can't race anymore, basically. Be a waste not to. Be a complete waste not to. Hope you guys have enjoyed today. A couple blunders for me, but we haven't, well, we failed our goals, what, twice? I think it was the first two races I may have failed the goals, but... Ah. It's been a serviceable day. I won't say it's been super productive because that would be a lie, but it's been serviceable. Fortunately, there haven't been any extremely important races, so.
But yeah, serviceable day. Unfortunately, um, no major GWS implications yet, or races, I should say. Um, but yeah, just constant reminders of some things you need to still be conscious of on certain horses. But you notice that's more of a mistake I make when I'm racing with too many. I don't usually make that mistake when I have fewer horses in my control as far as what I can actually race with on a yearly basis. Maybe I'm able to remember easily. When I have 30 horses, I'm, I'm human. I can only remember the riding style of so many horses at one time. I can't remember all of them at the same exact rate. That, that's just not my... I'm sure some of you guys are pretty incredible in doing that. I just admit it, that's hard for me to do, hence why I don't want to race with as many horses. Major Weber, she goes wild, but I mean, my girl, you're clear out in front. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was probably not the best time to put her on the whip, but she smokes this field. It's not even close. Major River, still the best dirt gal on track. She has seven years old. The fact that she peaks at six is really crazy. <laughs> Just imagine that. From the physiology perspective of what that means for a horse, like, and that's, that's the whole argument for how horse racing is in North America of greedy owners retiring their horses too soon when technically they're not going to be really at their peak until they're at least four years older, four years of age or older. We've seen that with several horses. I think Hot Rod Charlie proved to be one of those horses amongst many more. Why do Barrio seem to get stronger as he hit his four-year-old, you know, year, right? Like, that's to that to me is the normal trajectory of thoroughbred racehorses in North America. And yet, so many of them retire at, at the age of three. I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And I'm glad to know I'm not the only one because we've been talking about it in our Discord as of late. But it, it's really one of the things about the industry that just grinds my gears. That's besides the point. Major River. Um, I'm keeping her on the dirt campaign, man. I've just been running her in grade two. She did win the Kyoto earlier this year. She could win a grade one. In fact, it's still need to get her a dirt title. She's two away from that. So, yeah, <laughs> certainly need to keep her running in grade ones. I don't know why I thought she was kind of done with that, but not even close. Just got to find the right ones, most importantly. And that's not putting her in the GWS. I've stuck to my ambitions of not wanting to just put her in the hall of fame i think everybody knows she's capable of being a hall of fame horse i don't need to win the title to prove it definitely need a dirt title but there's like nothing there's there's no dirt races for her to run in anytime oh, over the summer at the domestic level that's not like a gws dirt race so I'm just gonna have to settle her for like something else got to run her in the sparking cup and she'll probably have a handicap for that yeah, 132. <sighs> I may have to give her a layoff. I don't really want to do that, but there's nothing for her. Like, there's hardly any dirt races. And the grade 2 Sephora, that might be a little bit long for her. 64? They said she can run the distance. I believe it. I don't really want to run her that long anymore. I would much rather keep her at that distance. I think, like, that's where she'll be her strongest. So, I'm either running her... In a race with a handicap where I'm waiting to run her until like September. And it's looking like September might be the case here. Yeah, she's going to miss the whole summer and she'll be a little bit mad. But my girl, there's nothing for you. I can't control it. But again, if I don't get a title with her, it's not a big deal either. I do vaguely remember saying to myself that like just winning as much as I can with her and just knowing she'll be a good broodmare will be fine enough. 16 wins of the 29 starts, 4 grade 1s, nothing special, but again, for a dirt broodmare, she'll be fine. She'll add to the strength of what we already have. That's, that's the point. Pearly Ball, this dude, 10 wins out of 13 starts. And he's on a winning streak. He's on a, um, let's see. He has won 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Eight race winning streak with Pearly Ball here. <laughs> and I've only been running him at grade twos, but definitely should put him in a grade one now. He's, I think he's actually overdue. I've really been coasting with him, but he's perfectly ready to run grade ones. And bouncing him back for the spring mile might be a little premature, but there's nobody else running that race. I figure why not? Let's see what he's capable of. If he can uh, win this race, 
despite being in the green, then yeah, he's definitely a true uh, double S horse. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think that's everybody, if I'm not mistaken. No, Rocky Hurricane. So finally, check your stats. So three wins out of seven starts, four finishes in the top seven. He was on a winning streak, but to go from running in opens and open allowances to running in a 12 furlong grade one race and finishing second, that's a pretty big jump, man, for an A-rated horse. That's pretty decent. Like you're you're winning opens and then you go into a 12 furlong endurance grade one and you finish second when you were supposed to finish fifth. I think that's pretty good. So again, his stats don't maybe look like it. I think he can win grade ones. Just gonna have to run him pretty short. But I want to give him another shot. Be a waste not to. Um Mars Stakes, you know what? He'll be in the green. The Pluto? He only has 77 speed. He's not super, super fast, but he could. Well, let's try him out. I'd, I'd rather run him in the blue for six furlongs. Golden Boy and Free um, free Fear. I mean, there should be some, some short time speed in there for sure. Golden Boy was not a super long endurance horse, even though he had the stamina for it, which doesn't make sense. But I felt like Golden Boy was much better at like the shorter distances. Like between eight and ten furlongs, that was like Golden Boy's like ideal range. So I think his son here should be very similar in that regards. So I think that's it. Busy schedule here. Five races coming up to kick off the next card. As always, we'll check on the little ones, see their progress. Do 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 do. As we go ahead and close out here. Um, but yeah, let's check them out. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the one-year-olds. Everybody at four stars except for one of them. Speed Demon by Golden Boy and My Master, still at four stars. See the pedigree, there's Western Tiger in there, Amp B, Lee's Gold, Honest Pegasus, so on and so forth. Rosette Eureka by Gentle House of Cleopatra. Cannot wait for her, she's a project horse of mine's. From Western Tiger and Suave Buster, from Flying Cowboy and Awesome Autumn, to then Gentle House and Cleopatra. Yeah, it's a lot of power in this pedigree. Lots of power for sure. Margarita Island, four star future here from Formal Opera and Tigers of Stone, half sister to East Side Band. Ladies and gentlemen, you see her pedigree. She's got Western Tiger, Suave Buster, Arctic Crop, Night Breeze, Pink Gemstone, Flying Cowboy, Originals of Ours, Tigers of Stone, and the late great Secretariat, aka Formal Opera. Pretty good pedigree, right? Her calm not looking great. She looks like she might be a little feisty, but that's perfectly fine. I just haven't been. It hasn't been a problem. Tiger Stone not a problem. Pink Gemstone not a problem. I think I felt like it's a problem. Yeah, not a problem. It's, it's it's not a problem. No R, huh? No R. No R in that word. Okay, Eric. There we go. Monarch, personal project. Uh, Joker's card by Joker's card out of Butterfly Effect. Technically, a horse of um, Abigail's here in the community. Uh, I'm still excited for this horse, regardless of only having three-star potential. I'm hoping it's a dark horse and a sleeper for us as far as the potential is concerned. Good pedigree, Western Tiger, Irish Fleet, Chasing Hearts, Diamond Plan, Arctic Crop, Butterfly Effect. Like, that's a pretty decent pedigree for only three generations. I think he'll be better than what is... I mean, technically speaking, he is developing well. His future just isn't four stars yet. Which also tells, what makes me wonder, does he have a, maybe he has a later growth type. It's possible. Astrophysicist. By he stargazing out of free fear. Excited for him. Not developing as strong in other categories, but he will have the power, which is really the most important. Third generation horse here, and the other one was actually fourth gen. This is a third gen. Western Tiger leaves gold free fear. He stargazing. All speed, all power. So yeah, he should, she, excuse me, she should be fine. And the newest group of yearlings, eight of them born, hence why I've said I'm skipping breeding for two years. Social Lie by Secret Ending and Miss Vapor Wave. Uh, this is a new pairing. This is the last continuation, the only continuation of the Moon Bee, King Bee pedigree. So thank goodness, hopefully this Philly Social Lie is quite the chaos for the rest of the field. But judging by Secret Ending as her sire and the rest of the pedigree on her mother's side, she should be more than fine. Awesome Autumn has been good to us. Pink Gemstone. 
she she should be fine i think she'll be really fun guitar solo by solo rider and cleopatra this pedigree is super stacked on both sides true fourth generation cult here guitar solo should be a serious legitimate hall of famer desert diver ant b western tiger swab buster awesome autumn flying cowboy diamond plan the gray two miracle moon trapper solo rider and cleopatra that's a full pedigree on both sides guys like full both sides completely stacked with quality horses guitar solo easily could be east side band before our eyes and it wouldn't surprise me it really wouldn't so remember this name guitar solo could genuinely be our cult version of east side band because we still haven't had one of those yet i think delta dream was close but still not quite that dominating on the level of east side band guitar solo easily could be that horse because cleopatra and galaxy star were the best fillies along with butterfly effect until east side band is rolled through so and solo rider has been one of my best original cults ever in this game as well so you're talking about two of my top five of all time originals creating a horse with two stacked pedigrees I'm telling you guitar solo could be really dangerous adios charlie by formal opera out of soy can keys the door really excited for this guy I, I just i love the name so i'm gonna be biased i just think he's gonna be really fun and uh, yeah soy can keys the door and secretariat essentially that that's the breeding pair here diamond plan chasing hearts arctic crop adios charlie should be fun this is my hot rod charlie people okay let me have it this is gonna be my hot rod charlie okay <laughs> and i'm gonna give him the red shadow roll i'm not even kidding to you i wasn't gonna name him hot rod charlie but like that is the complete inspiration behind this horse this is my hot rod charlie adios charlie <laughs> that's all i'll say westwood village westwood village this is the full-blooded sister to east side Ban. And I gave all the hype to Guitar Solo a couple moments ago. Obviously, Eastside Band's 100% full-blooded sister. That, in this game, we would consider black, right? Because those icons are as dark as they get. If they were lighter, she would be a gray. So we can call her a black horse, can we? Yes. The icons are the darkest that they are. For that shade. Um, yeah, she's Eastside Band's sister. We forgot the pedigree. Western Tiger, Arctic Crop, Tigris Stone, Flying Cowboy, Pink Gemstone, yada yada. You get the point. Yeah, we technically have, to me, two super elite horses on the way in the next two years with Guitar Solo for sure and I think Westwood Village. Again, the full blooded sister to Eastside Band. Cannot wait. Cannot, cannot wait. Ah, and I love that we're going to be able to get more yearlings and foals with this with this tone with this coat now that's gonna be fantastic may use her for more than two she may be an exception because like east side ban i i think ideally i want to double the breeding production for our best horses ideally so if i was gonna just limit it to two to keep our numbers down which is what several of you also kind of agreed with me on east side ban westwood village phillies like this i think we should at least give them four different foals that we can then sprout out into different directions and you can have that that baseline be there that east side band type quality be there and four other horses in four separate families you know what i mean just kind of creating different webs you know next we move on to queen's valley one year old ah, one year old listen to me new yearling by valley king and butterfly effect there was some opposition to me using Valley King for breeding. I'm telling you, you're going to eat your words. Valley King is going to be a great sire for this pedigree here. You see the pedigree. It's solid. Vivid Legend, Arctic Crop, Chasing Hearts, Western Tiger, Irish Fleet, Butterfly Effect. Solid pedigree. Valley King exceeded expectations. He was much. He was only an S-ranked horse, but he was as good as a double S. In fact, Valley King won way more grade ones as an S-ranked horse for me than some of my double S horses, okay? He was a double S force. Technically, the game just didn't give him the rating. But what he accomplished on track, he was that horse. Queens Valley, she should be fun. And I'm hoping she will be the best of Butterfly Effect that we've had. She should be the strongest of um, Butterfly Effect's offspring there. Tokyo Tea Room, my Kiki Light of Bay City. Excited for this gal as well. 
Another black horse, basically. You see the pedigree, Western Tiger, Lee's Gold, Desert Diver, Ant B, He Stargazing, the Grade 2 Miracle Moon Trapper, Kinky Light in Bay City. And Bay City was hot right out the gates as a three-year-old. Tokyo Tea Room, another project horse, really excited for her. Stars Align, another filly I'm extremely excited for. Abigail, I'm sure you are as well. Continuing the star, the star lineage here by Secret Ending out of Galaxy Star. Um... She's just a continuation of this theme we seem to have in all of our games with horses with the star names, but they always end up being some of our best. So I, I stick with it and I love it. Art to Crop, Vivid Legend, Chasing Hearts, and her pedigree of Ken, uh, Secret Ending. And the Hall of Famer, Galaxy Star. She technically has two Hall of Fame parents, even though I didn't put Secret Ending into the Hall of Fame. Because I basically used them like Flight Line, ran them a couple times, one out, and retired them. For good reason. The stars align. She should be fantastic. Galaxy stars. One of her first daughters, right? If not her first daughter. So excited. And last but not least, Magic Spurs. By He Stargazing. Out of Frugal Lark. What more can I say? You all know how great Frugal Lark was. And again, He Stargazing has proven across most of his foals on track to be a reliable and successful sire. But again, anybody that's come from Western Tiger has been successful for us in breeding. That's why he's in a lot of these pedigrees, but we're not in breeding. We're, we just avoided it. We got close, but we just avoided it. <laughs> so those are all the yearlings that we have to look forward to. You see why I'm not like worried about breeding. There are plenty of super quality double S quality horses. Didn't mean to say quality twice, but you get the point. A lot of super great horses are going to come through in the next two years. Next three years, technically, once they're actually able to race. That's 13, or excuse me, yeah, 13 new horses that are going to hit the track in the next two to three years, several of which are probably, are for sure going to be Hall of Famers. I don't, we don't need to breed for a while. We really don't. We can skip a couple years, get the numbers down, you know? So I'm racing horses now, but once I can let them go, like after this year, a lot of horses are going to be um, being released, retired, whatever. You know what I mean? Um, we'll be replacing, uh, whomever is in the barn and yeah, we all, we'll take a chance on them being a little bit older, but I keep bringing this point up. Like the age thing in, in my game, it, it's hit or miss. Sometimes it makes a difference and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm just, I'm not going to live in fear by thinking, Oh, she's 12 years old. I, she's, she can't like, yeah, it's a possibility, but like, that's, that's the point of the game. That's kind of the, that's the thrill. And that's just that, that's the challenge. Like, Maybe she can conceive. Maybe she'll be done after that. Maybe she won't be able to. And if that's the case, you have to improvise. It would suck, but, you know, I, I'm not reloading my saves on this file. I've only done that when there have been, like, bad race results or, you know, maybe something didn't actually work out. But I can't do that anymore. You guys know it. I'm just not in the mood for it. I can do it on Gallup Racer 3 on the emulator because it's really quick. But just to reload a file like this just to get the perfect result every time takes my aversion you know it makes me feel like i'm kind of like trying to exploit the game to give myself a better advantage that's not how i game i can't game like that it's not enjoyable for me you know what i mean it feels like i'm literally cheating and like what is the point if i'm just going to reload to get the perfect horse every time i know read me's and faqs will tell you that personally i just feel like that's taking some of the challenge out of really doing it yourself and you know just uh handling it you know in, in your own way but that's just how I feel about it, obviously. Doesn't mean you guys have to feel the same. But anyways, that's going to do it. Appreciate you all for the love and support. We'll be back some more Gout Racer action here, which will be kicking off, I believe, day 272. Because I believe this is 271. So yeah, day 272 is when I will see you guys next time. And until next time, Horse Racing Gamer sign out. You'll be a great and fantastic day. We'll see you after day 272 of Gout Racer. Welcome to Horse Racing Gamer, where champions are made.